You've been prepped and disarmed. Do you have anything to declare before execution, Dr. Holliday? No, I'm ready. Very well. Enter through the gate on your right when it opens. Enter. How did your instructional execution go this time, stranger? Good. As always. Well done, soldier. General Biggs seems impressed. What's he doing here? He's in the viewing room to assist Ken with my weapons training execution. You must love that. It wouldn't be so bad if you didn't insist on this joke with the electric chair. Not that funny, if you ask me. Mm-hmm. Hilarious. What's that with you? My recorder and notebook. I'll be mapping out the course in my field notes, and I'm testing my new recorder. Testing it? Research takes precedence to the hunt for me. I have to keep notes. Ready when you are, Doctor. Have fun. Ready, Ken! Remain poised and ready to react instantly. Pick up the compass from the chair. Make certain the compass is functioning properly. Remember what I have taught you about speed. You must avoid moving too quickly or too slowly. Find and maintain the proper speed. Ectoplasmic targeting system makes aiming second nature. What you got there is a Luger P08. It's a 9mm semi automatic sidearm with an 8 round magazine. Finally, when you aimed up or down, did it seem too fast or slow? You must move your weapons quickly, but not so fast that you can't control your aim. One last technique when navigating darkness. Your night vision goggles will help you find your way. However, always beware the danger of bodies of water. Your goggles see through water as though it were not there. Hmm, night vision goggles or multiple flashlight?
Stand there like a civilian firing away. Back away while shooting, keeping maximum distance between yourself and the night crawlers. And if things get too close for comfort, run to a better shooting position. Pick up the items. If you've been hurt badly, you can use the first aid bags to heal yourself. Building now is a Delisle carbine, 45 caliber. It has a seven round magazine and is designed to be a truly silent weapon. It is considered by many to be the most effective firearm of its type ever produced. Time to move on. You may find yourself in a situation with poor visibility. Strategize, run to a better location, then turn and fight. It is often better to retreat back to familiar territory. I must turn around quickly. Biggs wants me to pick up the weapon. This type of weapon will come in handy when you're out of ammo and fighting bulletproof nightcrawlers. Decapitation is a definitive solution. There is a catch, though. You gotta get up close. We've given you a large wooden stake, for reasons you can probably guess. Whether or not you use it is up to you. Large weapons like that stake cannot be stored in your jacket. To use these, you must first ready the weapon by drawing it before you can brandish it. You can put down the weapon when it's not drawn. The rest of this training mission is up to you, Doctor. You must find the exit door by whatever means necessary. It is the only door with a lever. Return to the room with the electric chair to complete this training execution. Begin now.
I may need my map for this.
That is the final lesson of the day. Be ready for anything and never let your guard down. Proceed to the chair room to complete the execution. Instructional execution is complete. If you found yourself running out of ammunition, you should try this training mission again to improve your accuracy. We are finished here. Meet me in the sparring room so I may help you in your pre-mission meditation. And Holiday, Colonel Hapscomb pushed forward his briefing with you and Stranger to 1000 hours tomorrow. That's 1000 hours sharp. Aye, sir. Where did you come from? Same place as you. That's impossible. I was just in the hall and... Never mind. Would you like to do the honors, stranger? What do you think? Then allow me. The world is a dark place. Who will protect the world from darkness? We will. After you. Security here is a joke. Hasn't changed since Roosevelt founded Spook House in 1902. Been using the same password for decades. We're becoming predictable. Predictable is dangerous. You are displaying a decided paranoia. No one even knows about this place. Whoever it is, they won't have a hard time getting in here. And you won't be so confident when you're dead within the year. What? Stranger, do you really have to be so morbid all the time? Just once might we hold a normal conversation. I'll meet you in the Colonel's office. I want to talk with Svetlana. Old McKernel is pairing the two of you for your next mission. I'm not sure. I'm on my way to the briefing now. Coming, stranger? Tell Hapscomb I'll be there in a minute. I'll be there in a minute. Holiday. Give me a minute to talk to Svetlana. Justine, up all night again? Unfortunately, yes. Why didn't you call me? I could have helped. I was at the house all night. <laughs> I know, but I knew you must have been asleep. And since you usually don't wake me when you have to pull an all-nighter, I thought I could return the favor for once. With as much time as we spend in this lab, Spookhouse should vanish us with a bed. That would be nice. These dissecting tables are seriously lacking in comfort. I hear you're going out in the field. Be careful. Don't worry. Just feed Dr. Faustus while I'm gone. Will do. The Colonel's waiting for you. You'd better go. I'll pack my things after the briefing. Yeah. 
Yes, a holiday. Please, have a seat. Colonel, your message sounded urgent. Where is the stranger? Speaking with Svetlana. He'll be in shortly. All right. So let's bring you up to speed, then. We've received news of some rather violent murders in Maryland. An old hermit named Rustin Parr walked into Burkittsville and announced that he was finally finished. When authorities searched his house, they discovered the bodies of seven children in the cellar, all of them horribly mutilated. Quite gruesome, isn't it? Mutilated? Ritualistically tortured before being killed. He'd carved symbols of some kind into their bodies. He disemboweled each of them. The entrails were never found. Colonel. The FBI sent agents to assist the local sheriff. And their reports lead us to believe there's more at work in that little town than the actions of one insane old man. Pa told police that he killed for an old woman ghost that lives in the woods. Well, that began the local recirculation of legends about the Blair Witch. I suppose I should have expected that reaction. Yes, he doesn't like being sent anywhere. He can't shoot something. Nevertheless, I want you to go to Burkittsville and investigate. Call in stranger if you need help. If anyone asks, tell them that your niece has been missing for several months and that you think this Pa character might have had something to do with it. And do avoid confrontation. These people have been living a nightmare. Frightening them any further simply will not do. I'll keep that in mind, Colonel. I was thinking the same thing. Where's Justine? Away. She said sorry she could not stay and uh, be careful on your mission. I see you are traveling light, as usual. Yes, well, we mortals have to depend on our equipment. Right, stranger? Speaking of which... Damn it, stranger, you've been going through my things again. Now, how many times do I have to tell you hands off? Svetlana, I'm going to need my spectral proximity sensor. Are you finished with it? Yeah, I was actually returning it. Expecting ghosts in the woods? You never know what's out there. I know what's not out there. You see, Svetlana, since Stranger has never found evidence to substantiate any of the Black Hills legends, Blair Witch or otherwise, the case is closed, as far as he's concerned. If something's not there, it's not there. You can look all you want. You never had the SPS before, so you could have been surrounded by ghosts the entire time and never known it. I'll find out for sure. What are you packing? Ugh. It's the Enhanced Charged Radiance Emitter. A glorified flashlight at best. It seems you found it useful in Germany. So the Blair Witch is a vampire. Well, that's not likely. But either way, I'll be prepared. Besides, I've made some enhancements. The charge time is decreased, and it operates on a far wider spectrum. I'm hoping it also affects ghosts and specters. Mm -hmm. Taking anything that shoots real bullets. My Luger and a Delisle carbine. Good choices. Quiet. Colonel's advice, huh? Ah, yes. Mustn't forget your trusty recorder. Oh, it's more than a recorder. It can also manipulate audio signals. With it, I can hear sounds that are normally undetectable. And the fancy camera you modified. Photographic records are essential to my research. Well, I guess that's about everything. Good luck, Doctor. Not going to wish me luck? If you still need luck with all that gear, you're really in trouble. Oh, and be sure and call me if you run into any actual monsters.
Welcome to Burkittsville, ma'am. Uh, I'd like a room, please. Certainly. Will your husband be joining you? I'm not married. I see. So you're uh, traveling alone, then? I am. Is there a problem? Oh, certainly not, ma'am. No, no problem at all. We just don't get many visitors through here, that's all. Except for the reporters, of course. The last of them finally cleared out this morning. Good riddance, I say. So what did happen then, exactly? God only knows what the papers outside of town are saying. I'm sure they're having a field day with it. Not that the story isn't terrific enough as it is. Our local paper, the Register, will give you the best account. You should see about picking up a copy. Here's your key. I put you in room four. How long do you think you'll be staying with us? Um, a few days, I imagine. Field Notes of Dr. Elspeth Holliday, Burkittsville, Maryland, July 21st, 1941. I've only been here half an hour, and already the small-town attitude is getting on my nerves. The manager at Burkittsville's only inn just stood there waiting for my husband to show up. Guess he's never seen a woman traveling alone. I'll see the sheriff next, play up my cover story, and maybe aim for a little pity. The helpless woman routine should go over easily in this town. I can't carry all my gear in town. I'll get it before I go into the woods. Maybe I won't turn in just yet. I don't have time for a bath right now. Hmm, the church is closed for the night. Locked. Hmm, well, I'll check back tomorrow. I might be able to find something on local folklore. Oh, <laughs> snuck up on me, huh? What can I do you for? Sorry, I didn't mean to surprise you. My name is Elspeth Holliday. I'm Horace Gersten. I'm the editor-in-chief of the Register. Are you a reporter? Oh, you've missed the big story. So I've heard. But I'm not a reporter, and, and that's not why I'm here. Well, not directly, anyway. I see. Well, this sounds interesting. My eight-year-old niece has been missing for months. I'm trying to find some information about Rustin Pa. Well, you came to the right place. I can give you the morning edition. It'll bring you up to date. Oh, that would be wonderful.
You seem awfully busy. You've broken a big story, haven't you? Oh, <laughs> already wrapped that. I'm on to a bigger one. <laughs> this town ain't seen nothing yet. Is there anything else you can tell me about, Pa? Well, I could, but well, you'd probably better talk to the sheriff first. Have you met Junior? Not yet, no. Well, that's really who you should talk to. Yeah, Junior's office is in the middle of town. Town Hall. There's nothing of interest in that direction. Closed. I'll have to come back tomorrow. I suppose I should head over to the diner, get something to eat. Maybe I can pick up some local gossip. This isn't my room. School has let out for the day. I'm not ready to go into the forest yet. It's a long walk, and I'd prefer not to go in there at night. Besides, I don't have a map.
Hello. Daniel Cole. What do you want? I, um, I'm looking for my niece. She's not here. Thank you. I can see that. But she's been missing for months. We think she's been kidnapped. Or perhaps Rust and Pa. I told the police everything I know about Pa. He came in here and said, I'm finally finished. Then the police found the missing kids at his place. End of story. Now, is there anything you'd like to buy? This is a store, after all. Feeling less and less welcome in Blacketsville, the owner of the general store, one Daniel Cole, all but chased me off his premises. The hoopla surrounding Pa's trial has worn the nerves of this town pretty thin. Hmm, this must be where pies go when they die. Hi, honey. My name's Gretchen. What can I get for you today? I'll just have the blue plate special. Thank you. I'm Peter Durant. Uh, Gretchen here owns this place, and she's the best darn cook in the county. Oh, Peter, stop. You're new in town, aren't you? No, I'm just visiting. My name's Elspeth Holliday. It's nice to meet you. Uh, what brings you to Burkittsville? You're not another reporter, I hope. Oh, no. Um... My sister's daughter disappeared a few months ago in Martinsburg. Oh, no, honey. That's just awful. Terrible. You don't think Rust and Parr had anything to do with it, do you? I certainly hope not. But it is possible. I'm in town to talk to the sheriff who investigated the case. The sheriff's name is Damon Bowers. Town Hall is down the street on the other side of the church. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Durant, if you don't mind my asking, what is your occupation? Not rude at all. I'm a librarian and head of the Burkittsville Historical Society. An historian? Ah, any areas of expertise? Well, just the history of Burkittsville. I guess you could call me an authority. I've been studying it all my life. Oh, interesting. Oh, it really is. We have quite a colorful history here. These uh, recent events have brought to light one of our oldest legends, stories about the Blair Witch. I've heard a few of the stories, but I don't really believe in that sort of thing. I do. I witnessed it myself. When I was a kid, a girl I knew named Robin Weaver disappeared in the woods. What happened to her? She eventually made her way back to town. And? Oh, it wasn't what happened to her that scared me. Heck, it still scares me now. This might sound silly, but uh, I'd rather not tell the story at night. If you are interested in our history, come by the library tomorrow. We have plenty of written documentation. And uh, if you pry, I may tell you my account of the Robin Weaver story. I might take you up on that offer. Uh, now, you said this girl, Robin Weaver, came out all right? What happened while she was gone? You should ask her. She still lives here. Careful, though. She's a little peculiar. Gretchen. It's true, Peter. That may be, but uh, Miss Holliday, Robin Weaver's always been a bit eccentric, even when she was a child. She keeps to herself most of the time now and would probably prefer being left alone. You know, you should stop by the newspaper office. The editor's name is Horace Gersten. He's been there a long time. He could tell you a lot of stories. It's pretty late now, but with the madness of the trial and all, he's been keeping some late hours. I bet he's still there. Yes, I met him. We didn't discuss much, though. He seemed awfully busy. Well, you might keep Horace in mind, just in case you don't find everything you're looking for in Peter's library. As for Parr specifically, try talking to people who knew the victims. Anyone that knows Kyle Brody might help. Kyle's the boy that escaped from Rustin Parr. 
Word is, he was forced to face the corner and listen as Parr did horrible things to those children. Can you imagine? He hasn't spoken a single word since he got back. But his teacher at the school is close to all the children of Burkittsville. Maybe she can help you. Oh, honey, I've been talking your ear off. Your dinner's getting cold. You go on and eat now. I've just met the town's librarian, Peter Durant, who promises to have a lot of information about local legends and mythology. So I'll visit the library tomorrow. Burkittsville residents are no strangers to the Blair Witch legends. Interesting that no one seems to have any first-hand experience with a witch, but nearly everyone claims to know someone who has, or know someone who knows someone. There's nothing of interest in that direction. Ma'am, how was your first day in Burkittsville? A long one. Tomorrow will be worse, I'm afraid. I'm planning on visiting Ruston Parr's place. You realize it's a four-hour walk, right? Do you even have a map? No. Where can I get one? Hmm. Don't rightly know. The uh, general store up the street, maybe? But, well, you, you just be careful, ma'am. Those woods are plenty dangerous. Wild animals? Animals? <laughs> no, no, ma'am. Animals stay out of those woods. They know better. Sometimes animals have more sense than people. So what should I be careful of? I pray to God you don't find out. And just stay away from Tappy East Creek. That's where she lives. Who? About a hundred years ago, she reached her pale white hand out of the water and pulled a little girl into the river. They never found the body. She's still down there in the water waiting for another victim. You're talking about the Blair Witch. You don't ever want to say that. She hears you when you say your name. Now stay away from that creek, man. For the love of God, stay away from that forest altogether. Now, good night. This isn't my room. This isn't my room. There's no phone in this room. Oh, how am I supposed to check in with Spook House? I'll have to talk to that innkeeper about it tomorrow.
can track it with my spectral proximity sensor. I'm not ready to go into the forest just yet. I can't waste any time. I've got to track that thing. There's nothing of interest in that direction. Wrong way.
Hello, anybody here? Oh, this might come in handy. There's a note on the door. On vacation back next Monday. That's not where I need to go now. Is that the sheriff? What's he about then? Excuse me, are you a daymite? Is going on here. I've never heard of daymites this far north. That's not where I need to go now.
Hello? Anybody here? This must be where pies go when they die. Come on! Come on. on.
can't waste any time. I've got to track that thing. There's nothing of interest in that direction. Wrong way. This isn't my room. This isn't my room.
Oh!